My adventure down battery lane has brought me to yet another pair of batteries today brought to you by Dr. Prepare. And of course, yes, that does mean they sent that to me over for review today. However, that does not change what I have to say. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about a set of batteries, although primarily it's just gonna be focused on a single battery. The system that I run currently in my house is a 24 volt system, so Dr. Prepare did send me two of them in order for me to series them together to work with my current system. The focal point of today's video is going to obviously be a little bit on the battery and whether or not it, it meets the specs that it's supposed to, but also primarily I wanna focus on how much Dr. Prepare with the, just this specific form factor battery has evolved in a very short time. And I will touch base a little later in the video on what I mean by that. But before all of that, let's get to the basic specs of this battery. This is the Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour 12.8 volt Life PO4 battery. For the record, I like to say Life Pal. It doesn't make sense, but it's way easier than saying PO4. 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours, AKA 1,280 watt hours. It has a 14.6 charging voltage, and it has the ability to discharge up to 100 amps while charging up to 50 amps. Now, because it is built on the LifePal platform, it can handle up to 3000 cycles before you see any degradation of battery capacity. And because of a lot of changes in some of Dr. Prepare's evolution, this also offers a 10 year warranty. And as just an added bonus before, something I said with the Power Queen battery last time, which I think some people got confused, is that they ship from California. It's not shipping from China, directly to you, which is a big deal for me. I get it, everything is made in China and I'm not saying this is American made. What I'm saying is that if they have stock and they sell it to you online, it's because they have it within the United States and they are shipping from California. That just means you're getting your stuff faster. And to me, that is an important detail. Throwing this on the scale, the battery weighs a total of 23 pounds and 6.5 ounces. You have the ability to run up to four of these batteries in series for a total of a 48 volt system. And of course you can run them in parallel if you would like. As for cost, that kind of depends on where you buy it from and what version you buy. That's right, there's a couple different versions and there's a couple different ways you can purchase it. For starters, and I will link in the description down below, you can go to Amazon and you can find these batteries, at least at the time of recording this video, for $399, so 400 bucks. If you go to the Dr. Prepare website, they can range up to $460. Which brings me back a little bit and I wanna talk about the evolution of this particular Dr. Prepare battery. If you're watching this video, you may or may not know of a guy on YouTube named Will Prouse. He is like the DIY solar guy and he gets batteries all the time for review, but he likes to take them apart. He will literally take a saw to it, cut it open and see what is inside. I am not the kind of person that's gonna take apart the battery for a couple different reasons. One. I want to use these batteries in my system and I don't want to break it. And two, even if I took it apart, there would be no way for me to look at parts and say, yeah, you know, these MOSFETs are made in this particular region of whatever, and they're really good. So according to Will and his breakdown of the older version of this battery, the BMS is good. It's a widely used thing. The only problem it had is that it does not have a low temperature sensor, meaning that you have the ability to damage your battery in an extreme low temperature if you were to try to charge it. His breakdown of the battery did find the high temperature protection, but no low temperature protection. And that is where things got interesting because Dr. Prepare actually reached out to him. They did some things and now we have a new version of the battery. And as you would guess, the new version of the battery does have the low temperature protection. You can still see on their website, the older version of the battery and the newer version of the battery, both of which will say, either does not have the low temperature protection or it does have the low temperature protection. 
I gotta be honest, depending on your scenario, you may or may not give a crap about low temperature protection. But if you wanna know the easy way to tell the difference, the newer one with the low temperature uh, sensors in it has this red outline with white text for all the warning labels. And it does not say anything about not being able to put the batteries in series. Whereas the older version, the one without the low temperature protection and a slightly less better BMS system than these have, does not say that you can put them in series, first of all. Everything on the front here, instead of being red, is just black with white text. But it's not just the sensors themselves. Dr. Prepare also says that the BMS has been upgraded. Considering that the old version of the battery warned you against running them in series, and the new one says you can do up to four, I would imagine that had a big play in that. So if you pull any information from this video that maybe is helping you make a decision financially to purchase one or more of these batteries, just try to make sure you get the new one. Whether or not you need the low temperature sensor does not matter. It's the fact that the newer ones have an upgraded BMS module, so it's just better. Let's just go with better and newer because yeah. When it comes to these form factor batteries, you will find a ton of batteries online that have almost exactly the same shape, the same lug layout, uh, same specs. A lot of manufacturers use the generic template for this to make their own battery. In fact, there is even some batteries out there that are exactly the same battery, they just have a different sticker on it. The key factor to something like this is Dr. Prepare is definitely much more well known in the industry. They offer a 10 year warranty and you can actually find information about them online. They're not some shady shadow company that, you know, could just up and disappear in six months because their batteries start catching on fire. I mean, I guess they technically could. All I'm saying is that they do exist a lot more than others. With all that said, I wanna go through some of the different tests that I did to verify that these batteries are capable of doing what they say they're capable of doing on paper. So first and foremost, 100 amp total capacity draw is the limitations. And in my testing, it can do more. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I was able to get the draw up to 110 amps. Now I was using a Sun Gold Power inverter slash charger for my testing because not only can I just hook a, a, a heat gun up to it and discharge it and see how much I can push it, but I can also use that exact same device to charge the batteries, which is nice. For my test, I also used a shunt with a display and I have one of those little clamper thingies that reads the amperage through wires. So I had a couple different things checking up on each other just to see you know, what was going on, but that's my testing environment. Even though I was able to get this up to 110 amps, the inverter did start to beep notifying, hey, you're over pulling, you need to back it down. And as soon as I brought it back down to 99, 100 amps, everything was fine. And I should note that in the future, when I did a full charge and then did a full discharge to test the capacity, that I was running that sucker at anywhere between 90 to 100 amps the entire time, all the way until it was dead, dead-ish. So 100 amps being pulled, check. Next, let's talk about charging. These batteries say that they can take up to 50 amps worth of charging, and I found that to be a bold face lie. If we wanted to make this max charging current anywhere near not a lie, we would have to change it to suggested max current. I was only experiencing around 40, 30, somewhere around there in the lower range uh, amp charging when the battery was at the uh, end of its cycle for charging, which means it was almost 100% full. But when I was doing my different tests, including discharging it all the way down as far as I possibly could, and I hooked my charger up to it, this thing would take some power. I legitimately saw this take a charge of 100 amps. 100 amps, which I feel like is dangerous, especially for batteries that degrades life, etc. I mean, I turned it down manually. I was hoping that the BMS maybe would have regulated that down by itself, but it did not. Maybe this is okay, maybe it's not. I don't know, but this is what I actually saw. For the first, I'm gonna guesstimate maybe the first 10% charging of the battery it was super hungry because even when I dropped my charger down, it was still wanting to pull 60, 75, 80 amps to charge the battery well above 50 amps that it says right here on the box. Now impatient Jason is like, heck yes, charge faster. Let's get this going. But the cautious, somewhat ignorant side of Jason says, well, is that dangerous? And or is it going to degrade the life of the battery? 
Like if I have this hooked up to my system and I go through massive power outage and I use my system to either zero or very near zero and I go to charge it back up, let's say this may happen a few times, like am I gonna cause permanent damage to my batteries? I don't really know enough about the LifePal batteries, the chemistry makeup to say for sure whether or not that's going to be detrimental to the batteries. The only thing that I have to go off of is the specs on the battery it says 50 amp, but I saw it push way more twice as much. I will say though, through the spectrum of it charging after turning down, obviously the charger, through the spectrum from zero to 100%, it did like to hover around that 61 amp range. That kind of seemed to be its comfortable spot. No, I did not try to turn it up more and test it out any further, but it just, it was fluctuating depending on what, you know, part of the charging process it was at. And now we have the last testing measurement I wanted to do, which is a capacity test. Keep in mind that I discharged this with a Sun Gold Power inverter slash charger, okay? That itself has some protection built in to make sure it does not 100% drain your battery. That is a feature of the inverter slash charger, and I kind of thought it would be like 10%, somewhere around there, but it's really all voltage driven. Either way, using my shunt and my digital readout, I hooked up to this battery, ran it at that 90 to 100 amps almost all the way through its entire life, and I was able to get a total of 1,230 watt hours, which if you consider that it's a 12.8 volt battery, that is 96 amp hours, which tells me that my inverter slash charger is leaving that 4% in reserve in order to not damage the battery. Because I've seen tests where people actually hook up to this directly with a different method of draining the battery and they're able to get a full 100 amp hours. In fact, Will Prowse DIY Solar Guy got like 101 amp hours. But we all know when it comes to lithium, it is definitely not a great idea to discharge your batteries to 0%. Well guys, that's about all I have to say about this battery. It's nice, it's small, it's only 23 pounds, and it's super easy to carry because it just has a little strap on the top. So there's nothing that I can say negative about this with the exception of my own ignorance thinking, is more than 50 amps really bad for the battery? You know, the whole charging thing. Past that though, solid battery. It's performed really well. Didn't it get hot when it was charging? Didn't it get hot when it was discharging? At least nothing that was too crazy. So overall, definitely satisfied. Again, I definitely recommend using the links in the below to the Amazon link if you're interested in this battery, just because the Dr. Prepare website seems to be maybe a little bit more. I mean, not only do they offer the newer battery with the red labels here versus the older battery with just the black label, but they also have a version of this battery that costs a little bit more that has a readout on the top to tell you what percentage is in this battery, which I really actually kind of would have liked because I am looking at a way to measure batteries independently when I build my system. So it would have been really nice to have that option built in, but it is nice to kind of see Dr. Prepare evolving, or at least offering those options and their newer versions of their batteries, you know, that if you want to pay the extra for it, it is an option. So check out the links below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.